Okay, I'm not sure how much of this we're going to get done. Uh, my thoughts are, <laughs> and I'm probably being too ambitious, is uh, I want to take the little plastic clips out, obviously keep them for the electrical wiring, um, the bits of wallpaper you can see that are coming off, I want to stri stick back down. And then before I stick the floor down, I want to see if I can strip the banister. I'm not really sure that's what I should be doing, but everything's just, just a little bit too brown. I don't know what wood's under there. It could be pine, it could be a redwood, it could be something horrendous. So it could be plywood. It shouldn't be plywood. But anyway, we'll strip a little bit of it and see where we go. So I'm in a very tight space. I might have to film bits and bring you back, but we'll see. Right, we'll give a go. We'll, we'll start to take these. Um... Right, well, that bit was quick and easy. I'm just using a uh, normal wallpaper paste, which I don't know if I can bring into view there. Just stick the paper back down with. And I know a lot of you would want to strip this off and replace it, but I'm trying to keep what I can. Because everything's getting harder to find in its original state. And I know by stripping the banister it won't be in its original state anymore, but like I say, there's there's little things that you want to do that maybe you shouldn't, but it depends what willpower you've got. <laughs> you can see the pine under there anyway, the pine construction. I'm obviously having to paste the wall. I will try and give the paper some as well. I don't know whether this will stick or not. I'll be honest with you. It's worked for me in the past on another project, but I suppose it depends how much of the wood absorbs the glue and how much the paper absorbs it. Right, let's see what that does. And the good thing about using just wall, wallpaper paste is it does slide everything in nicely. You need a bit of movement on it. And you know when you're thinking to yourself, I should have put a cloth. <laughs> Looks like my dress is going to have to be the cloth. Right, I just wanted you to see what it's like under there. As you can see, it's been painted at some point. Now whether that was part of the old wood it was constructed or whether that was painted for inside the house. The, the fact that it finishes there makes me think it was a painted wall for the house. So as you can see I've, pa I've pasted the paper and the wall again this side. So that door is definitely going to have to come off. But anyway for now we're concentrating on the hall. I want to try and get it finished. Right okay I've pasted it down there. You can see where it's wet and the other side. I showed you that's now pasted down while I was there I also went above that door and at the side and up there and down the side I need to see if I can fix that floorboard in place so I'm going to see if I can find a bit of wood I'll be back in a minute I've been and got a piece of wood it's just a rough piece of pine it is actually uh, has a relatively age to it it just looks new because it's the middle of the old pine and I've just scored it and then broke it off because I wanted it to go to a wedge shape at the end so it would be tight. So it's smothered in wood glue and I'm now just going to push that in. It's a bit loose on this side but it's tight there so I think once you can see the glue squeezing out. I tell you that I actually took a couple of bits of wood but that piece of wood is not going to go anywhere now. It won't move and let's face it, they're not very heavy. They're not going to get put the foot through the floor. <laughs> so anyway. I'll get back to you for the next stage. I've decided to fill the crack with a bit of wood filler purely because I am putting my paper uh, stone flag floor that I made in place. The rest of the house will be um, just left natural really. I don't want really want to mess around with the boards. I might stain one or two of them down a little bit or make them look like the smaller planks but this is the only one where I'll be putting paper down because um, I want to kind of, leave, like I say, leave it as natural as possible. So, yeah, 
I thought that was the best solution. So the paper's, you know, doesn't start coming up because it's got a gap there. So that's what I've done anyway. Right, I'm going to try a bit of this, um, see if I can get it off. I'm, first of all, I'm going on the gentle route and I'm trying white spirits with white wool. Let's see what happens. It might not shift it at all. I've brought you back to have a look how it's going along. To me, I don't want to take any more paint off than that. I don't think I should take some off the bottom. Don't get me wrong, off the bottom um, balustrade. But that looks like a lovely hand worn over the years banister rail. That's really. <laughs> Sorry it's all a bit, obviously it's hard to focus when it's a bit dark. It's a bit of a dark day and it's obviously dark in the house. I've had a think and in actual fact I probably am going to take those doors off and do something with the framework so it's probably not a good idea to stick the floor down just yet. Hi everyone, well you should be part way through the video by now. I must say a thank you to anybody who has already commented and uh, subscribe so, and to the regulars who comment on a regular basis I do really appreciate it so thank you um, winter's starting to draw in or autumn anyway and um, yeah the lights are getting on so hence the lights are on <laughs> so anyway we're on with Folly Beck Farm this week and uh, thing with a little doll so uh, you'll be seeing that um, yeah so enjoy Ta-ta for now. I've just had this through the post and it's, I don't know what it is. It could be something dollhouse related. It might not be. I really don't know. But it was a birthday gift from a lady called Christine. Thank you so much, Christine, who I've become friendly with through an eBay purchase that went a bit horribly wrong. But since then, we've kept in contact and she's also now a subscriber to my channel. I thought it was so kind. So let's see what it is. I say I have no idea what this is. It could be dollhouse related, it might not, I don't want to put into it. Well packaged anyway. Special delivery for Follyfoot. Lovely. I think she means Folly Beck, but it was close. <laughs> well, I hope she meant Folly Beck anyway, otherwise it's at the wrong address. <laughs> wow, this is all so exciting. How beautifully packaged is that? Oh. I'm going to... Ooh. It's washi tape, I think, type of stuff, so it might come off without ripping. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, look. <laughs> How adorable is that? Oh, it's definitely a special delivery. That's gorgeous. Oh, we'll have to see about mending her little arm and leg, bless her. Oh, that's so super cute. Thank you so much, Christine. You are such a lovely lady. There's a little something else in there for me, but um, I won't show that because it's private. But that is gorgeous. Thank you so much. And I'll just show you the lovely postcard that came with that. Now, isn't that a doll's house to admire? Gorgeous. Look at all those contents. And the message reads, I hope you like these little gifts. The one for Folly Beck needs some work, but I'm sure you can do it. Best wishes, Christine. Well, thank you so much, Christine. You are a true and 
lovely friend and thank you so much for this little doll. She is definitely going to get mended. Love it. Thank you. Hi all. Well, I know my birthday's over, but I just had to show you this little gift from my best friend. And I got my husband to build me a shelf in my summer house to accommodate it, which I think it looks rather nice there. So let's go have a quick look. Isn't it amazing? It's made from a cardboard box, paper mache, and some wooden slats. And she's made it all herself. I mean, so talented anyway. So let's have a little peek inside. It's a little beach hut. And there's the little mouse has been collecting his shells. And there's your fishing floats and a little ship on the back and a little stove with the kettle on. And the little shelf and we're displaying them. And obviously a table with a cup of tea and his lovely cosy cushions. little bench and tables and a little rug and there he is the little mouse himself I've called him Sandy because he loves the beach so there he is and all his little arms and his little legs move and his little head turns too You will stand. <laughs> like all, all tiny things, they're very difficult once they start having a mind of their own. There we go. He's got his little deck chair with his little rug for when it gets a bit chilly. But I just think she's so clever to have made this all just from a cardboard box and from little bits of wood and things. Obviously there's one or two little purchased items in there but it's amazing, just truly amazing. And she never ceases to amaze me on how talented she is. So I've popped him inside to sit at his table and enjoy his cuppa. And there you go, you can see the little reef rafters there. Right, we'll close the doors. No, put his little blanket away for now, we'll just pop it there. Thank you so much, Moira. I absolutely love it. See you later. Autumn's drawing in and the jackdaws have been busy at Follybeck Farm and Tobias, Beth and Charlotte need to keep warm. All right, Snout. Let's see what we got here. We've got me wiggly stick. Let's wiggle it up the chimney and see what comes out. Oh, oh there's no. a jackdaw. I'm off. Come here, Snout. You're covered in soot. Oh, let's get this out. Let's get this fire lit. There we go. I can smell crackling. Snout. Ooh, that looks nice. Let's have a seat. Bye for Tobias. Okay, I thought we'd tackle this little doll today. Because she is ridiculously proportioned for the size of her head. So hopefully we can put that right. And I think I'm going to try and use the existing fabric. First of all, the boring job of getting some of the glue off. I took out the stuffing which seemed to be some type of mohair. I've grown quite a bit of lavender in my garden. I've always loved lavender. So two minutes. I'm filling the body and the legs of this little doll with dried lavender. It's a good deterrent for moths. And this is very good for any old doll's house, obviously, because you have fabrics in there which can be eaten by the little blighters. But um, she's going to smell divine. I'm also naming her lavender because I thought it was quite appropriate.
Okay, this is what we've got so far. <laughs> she looks very strange like that, but very funny too. Right, so I've just been turning the lights back on for you. I realised I hadn't got them on. It's like I start doing stuff and then realise I haven't pressed record. Anyway, I'll shut up because <laughs> I'm probably going to fast forward you. I've just done the same as I did for the body, filled the lavender with legs but been a little less generous with it because um, where they join the body obviously they need to move a bit so you're going to have to not fill them too full so it will allow them to move. and I'm just judging that's forward on her leg so I need to make sure actually I'll just adjust that a little bit if that's forward then that needs to be and that's like the outside of a leg isn't it but yeah like that Right, I'll just do the same with the other leg. Right, that's just how I've got the right legs there. That's almost like two left legs, isn't it? <laughs> no, that definitely looks like that leg, so we'll move some of the I mean that's a good thing about lavender, we can move it about a bit. Get our needle in and just push it back up a bit. Right, well that's had its first stitch in. I think the other leg is still a little bit long. But we'll carry on for the moment and see if it gets any better. Right, there you go. That does actually look better. Not that it matters, because when she's got clothes on nobody would have seen, but it just looks a little bit better, doesn't it? The, her lavender to move around a little bit as well but yeah that's all right though let's re-glue that on like that i mean her whole body still looks a little bit big she wow she's hippie she is hippie well she's obviously related to me She's definitely on the hippie side. Right, I glued her head on and um, I decided that I would go ahead and dress her after all. Um, it would be nice to have her finished. So I'm not going to go through all the detail of that. I've just made her a little skirt from a straight piece of fabric that's hemmed. And I'm going to try and make a top from this piece of velvet. But we'll see. But I'll get back to you when it's done. Rightio. After many hours of sewing and changing the design a bit and trying to get mutton sleeves. I finally finished. That's what I'm calling finished anyway. So she has no pantaloons, but I'll I'll just put a bit of lace on the bottom of those of the legs. But 
there. Oh. Oh. So as you can see, I've used this uh, ribbon for the bodice. You can see. And obviously this fabric for the dress. Next time I do one, we'll go through it and uh, I'll just show you my process. Maybe not the right way, but it's the way I do things. But I didn't want to bore you with another doll just after I'd done one a few weeks back. So, yeah, there she is. She's all right. Might do her a bonnet yet. We'll see. See you later.